Hello class, this is section 3.2 and in this video we are going to discuss linear dependence and Ronskin's for n functions. So let's start with a definition of linear dependence. So n functions f1x, f2x until fnx are linearly dependent if there exists constants c1 up to cn so that C one F plus C two F plus C three oops sorry C one F one C two F two C three F three C N F N are all equal to zero and the C I are not all zero. Oh and this is going to be for all X. Okay, because f's are functions of x. Now you might think that this seems a bit different from the definition of linear dependence we had last time for second order, for, I mean for two functions. But it's actually the same thing. If you remember, the definition for uh, second order, for n equals 2, remember that the definition was that one function was a multiple of, a constant multiple of the other, and that's the, our definition of linear dependence. So let's see what happens here. For n equals 2, so c1 f1 plus c2 f2 equals 0. And also c1 and c2 are not both 0. Okay? Say c1 is non-zero. They can't both be 0. So let's just, pick, let's just say that c1 is the one that's non-zero. Then you can write down, write this down as f1 equals minus c2 over c1 f2. So in other words, f1 is a constant multiple of f2. So you can see that the definitions for uh, n equals 2 and n equals whatever are actually the same definition. So this is actually a really, really hard thing to check. So you, whereas in the second order case, you, the, second, the two functions case, you could just eyeball it and see that this function, these two functions are linearly dependent or not. You really don't want to do that when you are dealing with more than two functions. The way to deal, to, to show linear dependence is through the Ronskin. So here's the Ronskin. Um, so the Ronskin of n functions is just going to be the determinant of this matrix, f1, oops, sorry, f1 prime until f n minus 1, f2, f2 prime until f2 n minus 1, and so on. We have fn, fn prime, fn n minus 1. So you have to take a determinant of a big matrix, but the point is that okay so here's the point if we have a nth order linear homogeneous ODE that is one of this form uh, y n plus p naught y n minus 1 sorry I should start p1 instead p1 y n minus 1 plus until p n y and these guys are all functions of x equals 0 okay and we 
we might get solutions y1 to yn and we want to check if they are linearly independent or not. Here's how to check. The solutions are independent, are linearly independent, if the Ron skin of uh, the, f the solutions is not zero, the solutions are linearly dependent if the Ron skin is equal to zero. And these two, so you can, so, yeah, so, um, we often say that the functions, we only care about the differential equation on some interval, um, on some i, interval i, where the pi's are continuous. So this is going to be true like for all x in i, and for all x in i. So it's either one or the other. So anyway, the point is that if you want to check whether your solutions are linearly independent or not, just run them through the Ron skin, take the huge determinant of the matrix, and if it's zero, it's going to be linearly dependent. And if it's not zero, it's going to be linearly independent, much the same way as it was in the second order case.